Hello, today I'd like to show you how to have a little bit of um, fun with some wool felt or felted wool perhaps um, onto some fabric in the way of some applique. So I'm actually going to have a go at a third flower on this little panel here and I'm, I'm using a felted wool which is originally a woven woolen fabric and it's been felted so it doesn't particularly fray or anything so it's great to work with but it's quite thick. So when we're using the fusible web, it's a little bit harder to use because when you iron it from the front, like we normally do to fuse our applique to the background, it doesn't really heat up quite enough to work. So we actually have to iron it from the other side. So I'll just quickly show you how to do that. So I've traced my shapes just as usual to use the fusible web. If you're not sure about using paperback fusible webbing, I have covered that in a previous quilting tips and techniques video in video number 016. Um, so I've traced my shapes on and I've already fused one on here and I've got to cut that out. So you trace it on and you, you iron it on a little bit bigger and then you cut out on that sewn, sorry, on that drawn line. And for my stems and leaves, I've already cut those out. They also have got the fusible on the back, a very skinny little stem and a simple little leaf shape, and which I just kind of randomly drew. It wasn't anything flash. And so what I'm going to be doing here is positioning a third stem and leaf and, and another flower to go on there. And I just thought that was kind of a quaint little uh, picture. But if I, if I go ahead and just iron that through as normal to position that, because I've got the fusible webbing on the back, it's not going to fuse properly because the wool is too thick. So what you have to do is just, I guess it's a little bit more complicated because you've got to iron it from the back, so you've got to have it positioned right. So I'll just bring the iron over and position that and iron it in place to show you how I do that. So I can pop the leaf on afterwards. I've already got the fusible web on the back of this little green stem here and I want it to go roughly there. Now I'm not after an absolutely um, amazing straight position or anything. So I'm just going to hold it and flip that over and carefully lay that down on my board. Now if you're not too sure whether it's sitting okay you can just kind of pull that back but you can actually feel it because it's so thick it makes a ridge and I think that that's probably sitting okay. So now I would just iron that from the back and that's this is just a linen fabric it would work with a cotton fabric um, as just as well so that the heat goes through to fuse the fusing it will go through the cotton or linen for you but it doesn't want to go through that wool quite sufficiently to fuse it. So that's positioned on there now but now I need my little leaf shape on. So I've taken all the paper and stuff off already and this little leaf is actually a little droopy leaf. So same thing I'm going to pretty much lay it in position, flip it over and just check that that is sitting right up close to that stem there and you, again you can feel that to make sure that it's where you want it. And same thing again, I'm just going to hold the iron on that for a few seconds till that will have fused onto the background fabric. And there it is, it's fused. Oh, it's nearly fused. <laughs> and now I'm going to just run a, a straight stitch. I'm just doing some straight stitch to hold it on because it's fused as well. I'm not actually going around the edges of everything. I'm just going to come down the center of the stem and just the center of my leaf because I think that will hold quite sufficiently. So I'll just go to the machine and, and do that. So I'm just going to start at the top of the stem and try and get your stitching so that it occurs pretty much in the center of that stem. It is only narrow but it's really not that hard to do and just take it slowly, just a regular straight stitch. Now when I get to the leaf, if you've got a needle down that's always a helpful thing. When I get to the leaf, I'm just going to pivot and go straight out onto that leaf and do my line of sewing. And if you want to do more than just a straight line of sewing at this stage, that's when you probably would do it. Turn it round and come back up again, pretty much over the top of that same sewing till I get back onto the stem into the middle there. And then come all the way down to the bottom of the stem. There we have already a stem and a leaf applique. That was pretty snappy. 
Now I'll pull the thread through from the bottom of the stem because I'm not sure what's going to be happening down the bottom of my piece just yet and I'm going to tie my threads off so that they won't come undone. But the top ones, the top of the stem where the flower is going to overlap, I'm actually just going to trim that off because the flower is going to overlap so it's not actually going to be available to come undone so that's quite nifty. Now I'm also I'm going to iron the flower on I'm just changing the colour of the thread because I wanted a something a little bit closer than green to my red flower. And you could do blanket stitch around this applique, it doesn't have to be straight stitch, but I just kind of wanted that fairly simple look of the straight stitch that's not really going to stand out too much. So I'm going to bring the iron back. And now I need to position that flower. So just the same as we did with the leaf, peel the paper off the back of your um, wool felt and there's the glue on the back there and now I'm just going to position that flower kind of doesn't really matter I quite like things that are a bit wonky so it doesn't really matter if it moves and I'm going to lay that over now I'm just going to check that my probably see it better this way that my stem does go up underneath that flower we might just move up a touch because I want that to overlap so that nothing can come unraveled there but you don't want it to overlap too far because you'll have a huge lump in your flower. So same thing, I'm just heating that to get the fusing to work through the linen fabric so that it stays in one place. Yes, it's pretty much on there now. So I'll just get rid of this. And I'm going to come around there again with a straight stitch. And like I said, you could do a blanket stitch or you could do a decorative stitch. It's kind of any number of things you could do, but I'm just doing a straight stitch. So I'll just start towards one end. Again, if you've got the needle down, it helps because we're going to be turning quite often. All the way around. Now when I get as far away as I can from where I started, which is about there, I'm actually going to flip that back and pull that front thread through to the back. Now quite often I would tie that off, but in this instance, I'm going to overlap that stitch stitching with the stitching when I get there. So I'm actually just going to trim about half an inch away and not tie it because when I overlap it, that will effectively lock it in place. And then just continue on with my straight stitching close to that wool felt edge. I love the wool on the linen. I think it's just delicious, really. So I'm kind of back to where I started now. So I'm just overlapping three or four stitches and take that out and this time when I pull my thread through I will tie that off because I don't want that to come undone just with a little knot so it's easy enough to pull that thread through and tie a knot there and that's a little bit of wool applique onto a fabric which is fused which is obviously quite straightforward and Easy. Now what I've done to finish off my flower is I've actually done some little French knots um, with some stranded cottons. I've used all six strands of cotton and I have shown, done a video that shows how to do French knots on a let's get started on red work quilting tips and techniques and it was video number 059, uh, sorry, yes 059, um, which shows you how to do the French knots for red work but it's the same technique only I, I have used all six strands of my uh, embroidery thread to do those little French knots. So that was really just a quick idea to have a little go at some wool applique onto fabric just for fun. Thank you.